we added more JavaScript coding challenges on iCode this. And these are perfect if you want to improve your JavaScript coding skills. So let me show you. You can join iCodeThis.com for free. You can click login, login with GitHub or Google or with your email if you want. And in the mode section, we recently added the make me functional mode, which is specifically crafted to make you focus on JavaScript. And you'll see in a moment why. Of course, we have our daily challenges where you can practice HTML, CSS, and JavaScript by turning the designs into code. And we have the pro challenges, but you probably know. If not, give them a try. But in this video, I'm going to show you what the new Make Me Functional challenges are. As you can see, right now we have five, and one of them is free for you to try. So by clicking this, as you can see, it's called the Notifications Challenge. So basically, we're giving you the HTML and CSS, and your job is to add JavaScript to complete a series of tasks. As you can see, you have the HTML, but it's read-only mode. So your job is to study the HTML and the CSS and read the description so that you know what you have to do. And then in the JavaScript section, you can write your JavaScript code. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I would solve this coding challenge. Make sure that before you continue watching, you go to the website and give it a try. That way you can see if you can do it. And then come back and watch the video and see how I'll complete the challenge. All right, so as you can see here, we have a notification container and the button that should trigger notifications container, right? So let's read the description. In this mode, you are given HTML and CSS template, and your focus should be on adding the required functionality with JavaScript. You can change the HTML and CSS, but you can use JavaScript to alter the DOM if you need. So if you are more advanced and you really want to change things around, you can change the HTML structure and add classes and whatnot using JavaScript. Once you're done, press submit. And what we'll have to do is clicking on the bell button will minimize the entire notification container. Clicking again will make it appear back. So this button, right? Clicking on the mark all as read button will remove all notification items from the notifications list. Okay, so this button will remove everything. Clicking on the decline button will remove the decline and accept buttons. And we'll show a paragraph saying the notification has been declined. Or clicking the accept button will remove the decline and accept buttons and will show a paragraph saying the notification has been accepted. So these two buttons. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Let's see, what do we need? So basically we need to target this button and to get the container for the notification. So let's study the HTML. We have a button with a class of bell button. All right, so this one. And here we have a div, yeah, this is it, with a class of notifications wrapper. Let's go in JavaScript. And here we can say toggle btn is document, query selector, and we can get the, how was it? Bell btn, bell btn, all right. And notifications container, document query selector. Let me just copy the CSS class. All right, good. So basically, so now that we have these two items, what we want to do is apply some sort of class on notification center. Let's see. We have the button, notification wrapper, okay, item. Hmm. Let's see. All right, so we don't have a class that will hide it, so we'll have to add the JavaScript to apply the CSS directly. All right, good. So we can say toggle btn, add event listener, and on click, we want to do the following. We want to get the notifications container and we want to style it, let's say display none. For now, let's just test it to see if it works. And there you go, it works, it disappeared. But now if we click the button, nothing happens because, well, we only treated one case, right? Okay, I'm thinking. So we would need to have a way to know how many times we clicked or we need to get the style of the notification container. All right, I have an idea. Let's see what if we create a Boolean value which will keep track of the state of our notification container. So initially it will be open. Let's say notification container, um, let's say is 
notification container open. Initially it's true. So we want to check if is notification container open, we want to do something else, we want to do something else, right? So if it's open, we want to close it. So notifications container style display, let's go back to none. And if it's not open, we want to open it. So notifications container style display, let's go back to block. But now we also need to toggle this boolean, right? Because otherwise, again, we will just toggle it off and we wouldn't be able to toggle it back on. So we can say is notification container open. Here we can say false. And here we set it back to true. All right, let's see. We click it, it's gone. We click it again. Look at that. Pretty cool. Back again. Now, I don't really like the fact that it kind of changes the layout. And this is due to the fact that we have flex on the container. So everything is in the middle, right? Um, I think here we can do a trick. Instead of hiding it using display, what if we scale it? So we will scale it to zero and we will scale it back to one. Let's see what happens now. All right, as you can see, now instead of changing the layout, we're just scaling it. And this happens instantaneously because we don't have a transition yet. But as you can see, it still kind of fits in the place here, right? We just don't see it because it's hidden. One thing we can do here in JavaScript now in order to see the transition is we can go up here and get a notification center and give it a transition for 0.3 seconds in a linear fashion. We want to see it scale down, scale back up. Let's see. Look at that. Pretty cool. Kind of slow though, so let's make it faster. Hmm. That's pretty nice. Maybe two? Okay. Good. And what if we would like it to kind of animate towards the button here? We can change the transform origin, the notifications container style transform origin, and it can be top right. Right? Right. So here. Let's see. Look at that. Now it kind of feels that it goes inside the button and comes out from the button. So now we have the first task ready. We could like mark it. That's a good idea for the future. We should add the checkboxes here. Okay, next, clicking on the mark as all as read button, we remove all the notification items from the notification list. Okay, let's see where we have it. So we have the button with the class mark as read button. So let's take class and as we did previously we can go here uh, mark all btn we can say document query selector and target that and now when we click it we want to do the following let's scroll down and let's see so we have a notification list and the notification list apparently has notification items right so i think the simplest way is to just empty out the notification list Maybe instead of the allies, we put a paragraph saying everything is red. We could also loop over the notification items like each ally and hide them. But I don't think that will be the best case here. But yeah, let's go with the first approach. We're going to target the notifications list as we did so many times already. Notification list container and query selector. We get it by the class. And when we press this mark all button, we want to set the inner HTML to be an ally because we are in an UL. So let's keep the format and say something like you are up to date. So let's see when we press this, whoo, you are up to date. Of course, I don't like that styling, but I think we have styling for notification item. See, one thing I should have done is to read the CSS to get familiarized with just assumed I know what it's here, but okay. We can add a class of notification item. So that will add some styling. Let's see how that works. And we close it like that. Let's see. All right, you're up to date. Pretty cool. And of course, if we click it again, it will just reset the inner HTML to be this ally. So nothing else to do here. All right. So that's the second one completed. By the way, this is a live preview, as you probably noticed. So whenever we change the JavaScript here, it will refresh. So we'll see again the entire DOM we have. Okay, good. Next, 
clicking on the decline button, we remove those and on accept, we remove those and we have different texts. Okay, let's see. How do we find those? Now, this is a bit trickier because we could do this by finding the decline button, which is in this case, we only have one, right? And we could click on this, go up to the parent, to the notification item buttons, and we could remove it and add a text, right? But the better approach would be to do it, even though we only have one set of buttons, we should get all the buttons on the page and attach an event listener for all the decline buttons and for all the accept buttons to do the same functionality. I hope this makes sense. So instead of just doing this for this button, because that's we only have one on the page, we will do it to work on several more buttons in case we want later on to have more notifications on the page. This is a good exercise to basically think ahead. Okay, so let's get the decline buttons. And this and in this case, I'm going to say decline buttons with an S just so we know that there are multiples. Although in this case, we only have one on the page, but there could be multiples. Document, query selector, all in this case, we want to get all the buttons that have a class of decline button, and we'll do the same with accept buttons. The structure will be the same. So whenever we press uh, one of the decline buttons, we want to add a click event. But how do we do that? We want to loop over all these buttons. So for each button, we want to add an event listener like that. And what do we want to do? So basically we want to go in their parent, right in the notification item buttons and add the paragraph. Now, although we could add the paragraph instead of the buttons, let's do that first. So we can say button dot parent node, I think, let's try in our HTML will be, let's say a paragraph, which will say, uh, not what was it? I forgot. The notification has been declined. Let's write that. Let's see what happens. So we click the button and it says the notification has been declined, which works, right? We kind of completed the task we had to. We can copy paste this and do it for the accept buttons as well. Let me copy the, that text as well. The notification has been accepted. Oh, just that word. So that will work on that one as well. But I kind of don't like the fact that, but well, maybe it's just me. As you can see, this paragraph is still in the notification item button there, which I don't know, kind of don't like it. So I'm going to complicate things because that's what we do as developers, right? And I'm going to delete the parent node, remove it from the DOM. But before that, I'm going to the parent of the parent, right? Which is in this case, like we are here, we want to go up once notification item buttons and we'll go into this div. And in this div, we're going to append child, we're going to append a paragraph, which we're going to create. So let's see, paragraph is going to be document.create, and will be a paragraph, of course. And the paragraph, let's just say inner text in this case, is going to be this text we want to have on the page. So then we append this paragraph to that outer div, then we remove the container of the buttons, which will also remove the buttons. And this is basically more clean, I think, right? Maybe I'm wrong, but oh, well, it's more clean to me. So let's see, it basically does the same thing. Text is too close there. So we can even go and say paragraph, oops, paragraph style that margin top, let's say one rem. Is it too much? All right, perfect. And now let's copy the same thing move it over here and say this is accepted, right? Because it's pretty much the same thing and it works the same. But in this case, by the way, let me zoom in here so it's better. If we go into DOM, as you can see, we have the paragraph nicely tied that diff and it's more clean. We don't have some hanging div which we don't know, right? So we cleaned things up. Although the code might look a bit more complex than we had before, but this way we also learned how to create an element, how to add a text inside it and all of that fun stuff. All right. So I think that's pretty much it. When we click this, it toggles things. When we click this, it removes all the notifications. And if we refresh here a bit, 
if we click the decline, it will say the notification has been declined. And again, if we click accept, the notification has been accepted. So those are all the four tasks. And we can submit. And there you go. This is our first JavaScript coding challenge completed. I hope you enjoyed this. And once you complete your challenge, you can also see how others did it. As you can see, we have dozens of developers who already completed. You can view their code and study, see what did they do differently. As you can see, this code is, well, different, right? And you can learn different approaches and different styles, which will overall make you a better developer. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to do more. As you can see, we have five coding challenges here specifically targeted to help you with JavaScript, but as well, we have hundreds of daily coding challenges where you can turn designs into HTML and CSS. Also, you can see we have dozens of developers who completed the challenges in different ways so you can study their code and learn. And of course, we have a community on Discord. I'll put the link in the description. So pretty much we have everything you need to improve your coding skills. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.